What's up, dude? Dude, I'm sleepy. <laughs> <laughs> what episode is this? Episode eight. eight. Welcome to episode eight. We didn't think this one was going to exist. No. I'm supposed to be in Florence right now. Yeah. So, <laughs> Charlie, when you left on Monday, yeah. your itinerary said, returning July 5th. It's it is June. June 30th. <laughs> Explain to me why you're on this couch and not in Florence, Italy. It's about efficiency, man. <laughs> when a family loves each other, they're we got, able to do a 10-day trip in just five. We got 10 days worth of love in five days. We were overloading on love. It was too much. Uh, there, yeah, so uh, let's start at the beginning. I went to Italy. Yeah, with your mom, your dad, and your brother. The plan came because I had decided that Family's important, and I love them, but I don't make a lot of time for them. So mm -hmm. I was like, "We're going to spend time together." This it was a beautiful, <laughs> it was a beautiful, well-intentioned. You, you were coming oh, off man. a personal development retreat. Yeah. You said, "I want to spend more time with mom and dad. <laughs> I'm going to pay for a trip for everyone yeah. to go to Italy." And so we went so to Italy. Went to Italy. We got there, and immediately, this isn't why we left, but I get there, and my parents have arrived before us. My dad is in a brimmed hat, fanny pack shirt he's got a messed up leg so he's got a cane and a like alan iverson thing on his arm but it's on his leg you yeah, know yeah. which <laughs> i respect like... this is exactly what i would look like <laughs> yeah, if i were going to italy yeah. with like zinc on his nose Perfect. you know like that this, type of a this thing is, your dad and i are one i was like okay we're gonna blend in this is great <laughs> we uh we are definitely gonna be okay no one will even think to rob us <laughs> <laughs> we are not tourists. so but we we went around and it wasn't the first day i guess we had a day to hang out and then went to Pompeii and in Pompeii was when was the first time I was like this probably needs to end it might have been around Pompeii we get in a bus it's a three-hour bus I had imagined one of the buses that comes out to Santa Monica which is those big long buses that have the tinted windows and maybe even a charger if you're lucky mm -hmm. in your seat and it was one of those shorter little vans which if my leg couldn't fit like it is right now so it, you're, you're back in it it's bumpy the transmission is broken, so it's herky jerky. I'm yeah, staring yeah. at the horizon, trying not to throw up. Yeah. But the piece of bread that I had this morning sounds like, <laughs> sounds like the transportation in Costa Rica when we were there. Exactly, and I've done all of that before. We've done this. Yeah, and I'm going, and I've been to Rome, and it, I was like, "Why am I here?" <laughs> it's going through my head. I flew. 13 hours to get here to sit on a van to sit on a van and if i were back home one i'd probably be asleep because of the time but i would have just taken a walk in beautiful weather today not to mention that it's 95 outside so that's the first time it dawns on me and i'm looking around the van and it's dawned on everybody but nobody <laughs> says it immediately <laughs> and we go to pompeii and my dad's got pompeii's awesome i'll talk i'll tell you about it but my dad's got a messed up leg and not only is Europe cobblestone, but Pompeii got exploded 2,000 years right, ago. Right. So it's cobblestone that has exploded 2,000 years ago. And he's got a cane and he's walking. He's not complaining. But I'm there with my family as this tour continues. And this is one of the common things that I saw on the tours. Whenever somebody asked a question, it was like school. And there was a palpable feeling that you had disappointed the rest of the class by making this drag on. <laughs> and... I looked around the tour and you don't want to be here. You don't want to be here. Who is excited about yeah, yeah. this? I felt it, like I kind of was. You got the vibe people are just doing it because they think they're supposed to because they're Yeah, in everybody, Rome. including myself, it's 95 and humid is running for shadows. They're barely looking at the things he's saying. If it can't be seen from a shadowy place, people aren't even looking at oh, the wow. thing. So it's it was an interesting tour and I'm – of, I would say, the group, one of the people more interested in the history and reflective, but there were no questions. There was, it was, I got the sense that if the tour was supposed to be an hour and a half and it went an hour 45, people would have been upset. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and it was, it was on to the next thing. And, and I encountered that throughout. So that was when it dawned on me. And then we came back and we talked. My dad's leg, he wasn't complaining, but was clearly not going to hold up. The second leg of the trip was us going to even smaller towns than Rome. And it was Cinque Terre was this last town, which apparently is beautiful. But the other thing is that I'm there in this place with my family. We're not talking. We're the tour guide Standing is talking. Still, yeah, yeah. The tour guide is you're, talking. You're walking near it, each other. It was like we went to a movie together and right. we were just near one another. And so when we did talk, it was not when we were in the streets because the streets of Rome are the sidewalks are this wide so you have to walk single file and the only times that we chatted were at lunch but more in the hotel room <laughs> <laughs> and 
I probably brought it up at the end of the first or second. I was, this needs to be shorter yeah, <laughs> than yeah, yeah. it is for a hundred reasons. One, because my life in Santa Monica is awesome and it's not 95 and humid and I'm not on a little bus. And if I care about Pompeii, I'll watch a documentary. And I, I'm interested in all that. Quite frankly, I might be the only person to go back and watch a documentary on yeah, Pompeii. Yeah. But that was one thing. And Well, the internet does make traveling yeah. different. You know, because yeah. there's still the idea that you live in Philadelphia, let's say, and it's cold because it's January and you can make it to Bali or so, uh, Hawaii and it's warm and sit on the beach. You're like, yeah, that's a worthwhile vacation. Yeah. But to go, you can learn more about Pompeii by watching a YouTube video about Pompeii than yeah. about going to it. So unless it's something you really, really think visually seeing it is the experience, mm -hmm. the internet has kind of killed yeah. <laughs> the need totally. to go there. Totally. And and I think there are reasons to go, which we can discuss. But as far as my family goes, my mom and dad were like, okay, we're going to stay through Florence. Florence is more manageable. And then before Cinque Terre, we're going to go home. And Henry and I just dipped after Rome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we just came back. And when we decided we were going to leave, we played, I don't know who sings it. I just Googled Celebration. You know the song? <laughs> Celebration. Oh, yeah. You guys are so excited. <laughs> Everyone danced. We were so jacked up. We high-fived. We hugged. We made it. The great Rome escape. Everyone was so happy. Wow. <laughs> At least everyone, me and Henry, were just so excited to get back. There are so many people devastated right now because yeah. they think they would love and to everyone, go to Rome. And now I have to, now I have to backpedal because people are going to think, and it's true, it's the most first world of experiences, but I think there's a, there's a more interesting conversation to be had, which is around the value of, of travel. My experience is one where you and I have worked hard to not care about sunk costs. Mm -hmm. And when I spoke, I spoke to people on these tours, I spoke, there was a strong sense of I'm here, so I have to. Sure. Everyone seemed to feel like they were on a school trip. I talked to like, oh man, my room is really small and the bus kind of in the heat is bad, but you know, we only have two more days, so my feet hurt, but do, are you enjoying this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you, but are, is this fun for you in the moment? Well, sometimes people want to just say they've done things. And that was what the strong impression that I got. So we went to Trevi Fountain, day one, packed. And you see selfie sticks and people. I saw a ton of people go to Trevi Fountain and not face the fountain. I'm not kidding. Walk in, clear out a little bit of space to take a selfie. Maybe have your friend or your boyfriend get you while you act like you can't see the camera. Very popular <laughs> shot. Very popular shot. And then leave. That was it. That was Trevi Fountain for their yeah. experience. That's weird because I vaguely remember I went... 12 years ago. Trevi was I, cool. Yeah, I vaguely so remember cool. Trevi Fountain being really cool. Well, you know why we liked it? We were taking a stroll around. We were there with a the, with the school trip, and we stumbled on it. And I remember oh, is it, that true? Yeah, I remember being floored. Yeah. When you make it your destination, and Trevi is the goal, it's a very different experience because there's fountains in a lot of places. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> and you're, okay, this was the point of the trip, and it it's not living up to the cost and the time that, that have gone into it necessarily. But any, I came back in the morning. I woke up at, my, I was jet lagged. I woke up at 4 or 5 a.m., and it was getting bright, so I wanted to go to the fountain. So I walked to the fountain, got there. There were 25 people there. I've told you this. Looked around, and I wanted to count because I saw so many cameras and so many people that were not, into the fountain and i looked and counted of the 25 i would say one and a half were facing the fountain looking at it without a camera in their hand everyone else had was not facing because they were posing for a picture or they were taking the photo or they were wandering off or they, they yeah, it was wild. just it was i was shocked dude i noticed the same thing in santa monica actually because we talked about this henry and i went we ate outside yesterday so it was mm -hmm. beautiful and the sun was setting and you can see the people standing by the bluffs on the ocean yeah. and so many people were looking at the sunset <laughs> through their phone you know like you could just see you see people yeah. doing this <laughs> and what's what's crazy to me is because i've done that sometimes at sporting events or whatever that removes you from the experience oh of like, course instead of it being sunset you sunset camera you and you're looking at it through the camera and you're worried about what mm -hmm. it looks like y your first your immediate enjoyment and presentness is just destroyed by that by having that camera in the middle yeah so i was reading about narcissism like on the plane ride over <laughs> why <laughs> i'm interested in it just i'm interested fun. and i think narcissist sometimes has this evil connotation to it but this makes the argument that narcissist is simply someone that is concerned first and foremost with identity that it's 
as opposed to experience, as opposed to is narcissism relationship. supposed to be like a brain imbalance you're born with, or is that something that can just occur through nurture? So this particular person argues that it is the pathology of our age, which means that it can be culturally influenced so that we are pushed, encouraged, and it okay. becomes it becomes our operating system. But it doesn't have to be. That's the other thing. Because you're not born with it, it doesn't have to continue. But narcissism isn't like, oh, that kid's skinning squirrels at age three. Like, no, this that's psychopathy. Well. Yeah. Okay. But <laughs> yeah. I'm saying you're born with yes. that. You're born with that. You're that just one's like, horrible, man. Yeah. They all knew. All it's You have these parents of these serial killers. Yeah, he was just a monster from, yeah. from the no, I, was listening to a, I was listening to a podcast the other day hard tangent then we'll get back to Italy <laughs> but this guy got in a fight with his roommate he kicked his roommate out when his roommate left he decapitated his dog like purposely tied Jesus. it down and beheaded it and this isn't the first animal he's killed yeah and he's gonna go to jail for two years what maybe five years like you know uh, what i mean it's not a, and it's and you're like all right cool this guy's 24 yeah he is already showing behavior like this like you n normal people don't decapitate dogs he's gonna go to prison yeah and for five years he's gonna be in that soup kitchen of an environment you know what i mean like that's gonna be the ethos he picks up and then he's gonna come out at 29 <laughs> <it'll> be okay <laughs> Reformed. <laughs> so it's like no it's like what do you do this is this is just the next yeah. murderer it makes you wonder what the point of prison is because obviously with the laws that we have on the books are not as harsh for murdering an animal as they are for murdering a person but we're not clearly we're not doing predictive like hey this person not has that it should be skinned alive seven squirrels while he was a child yeah he's killed whatever three dogs it's not preventative it perceives it's gonna seems, come out and kill yeah, humans yeah it seems it seems not preventative. It yeah, seems weird, right? based on retribution when you look at it that way. Because if he'd killed a person, the family would have wanted blood and they'd put him in there for the rest of his life. Yeah, Even if know. it was an accident. Even if we got to get him. But if it's an animal and nobody's complaining. Hard tangent. <laughs> yeah. That guy seems like he's born with a bad brain. He's uh, yeah, probably yeah. going to murder people. But anyway. <laughs> we'll check back on Let's the talk about narcissism. episode 700. We'll see how he's doing. <laughs> hey, Ben, what's so, right? So narcissism, and I don't mean it in anybody's an evil way, but being perceived first and foremost with identity and a far distant is experience is exactly... I was that's what I saw and felt throughout the trip and even my own desire to go was in a romantic oh, it's funny romantic right we yeah, were in yeah. Rome it was this idea of what it would mean if we as a family went there not recognizing that and as long as I've known my family the things that we like my dad has had a messed up leg for years why am I not thinking <laughs> clearly yeah. uh the times that we spend together are talking that's what we do they're 60 and, and getting older sure. and my mom would like to ride a bike sure but do we need to ride 15 hours to do that my mom has never expressed an interest in history all that she wants to do is be next to her kids mm -hmm. and chat with them and maybe ride a bike why did i go to rome right. what am i thinking and i saw so much of that i saw so much we have to be in pompeii we have to get through this tour don't ask any questions. <laughs> Let's mm -hmm. get back on the bus and do the next thing that we have to do. And it came through in the conversations that we had. It was funny. We were in the Vatican, which is awesome, yeah. by the way. If you care about history. Or art. Or art. The Vatican I don't, is probably the best museum in the world. Does anywhere, anywhere on the planet come? You were in the I Louvre. Thought, I thought the Vatican and the Louvre were the two best museums in the world. I haven't been to the Louvre. I haven't been anywhere that scratches the Vatican. Yeah, yeah. I have been to the Louvre. But That's I've, what happens I've, when you conquer a bunch of countries and steal all their best stuff. It's amazing. <laughs> it's it's flooring and people it's, it's amazing in a morbid way we run through it so these these hallways that connect the pope's winter home to his summer home because he wanted to you know <laughs> reasonable which is the the hypocrisy of a rich man it is tougher for a rich man to get into the kingdom of god than for a camel yeah, to yeah. pass with the eye of a needle was just screaming well it's also interesting to me like when tragedies occur i don't really understand the vatican doesn't sell its art to help <laughs> you know what i mean like it has yeah. it has the school of athens right i was trying to the school value. of athens has got to i don't be, know does it have this does it have the school that the of one athens? that points up and down it's there yeah i didn't even one, see dude, it this time that's the one where one oh points to the sky and one points to the ground right yeah we saw it there when we were 19 i, dude, I think it's still there we sprinted and i didn't want to but we sprinted because the it's all about what other people say is good and they say the sistine chapel is the most important so we ran past things that i would have liked to hear Dude, about we, talk we about stumbled upon the school that that was the coolest thing oh, i thought in the vatican you and i, I walked you're, by you're right. reminding me oh look at that I, was it but was it there is, though, it was somewhere in europe why I, maybe don't they sell that and get water to people who don't have clean water or like food or a hurricane Katrina yeah. or whatever. like that painting has got to be worth a hundred million dollars yeah 
why is it sitting in the Vatican? Your job is to help the impoverished, right? To help people in poor conditions. I don't. Get I don't it. think that's. I think they do some work. I think they. They. But yeah, I don't think that's how they view their mission. I think clearly, and I'll try to defend the Vatican. They see what they do as spanning hundreds of years, and and any human life just doesn't compare. Right. right. So that's why. Well, why do they tithe? What are they taking the ten percent for? That's so they can take your money and give it to someone well, but else. That's what I'm Why? <laughs> like, if you're gonna tithe and you're gonna own yeah, yeah. the school, and of to be clear, the ch- and just so <laughs> we're the church does good things, but yeah, I uh, at very little financial sacrifice to the church. I was itself. just confused when yeah. I was walking through. I was like, and Wait. I'm talking about the church with the capital C. I'm not talking about your church in your hometown. If you're watching, oh, I have I no idea what you do. I literally was just confused by the Vatican. Yes, was like, it was. Why? It was- <laughs> It was frustrating. There's, there's things made of solid gold yeah. that are here. I yeah. think there was a gold floor. In the background, nobody like, cares. Yeah. It's, Why don't we sell this gold, replace it with wood? And yeah. I don't know. I'd be curious. I'd love, to, I'd love to get a historian and a religious historian on to talk about this stuff. But we sprinted past. I didn't see the School of Athens. Maybe that's what they use the fee that they charge. Maybe it's a long play. So they, you've been to the Sistine Chapel. It's beautiful. I don't think it's the coolest thing. I think the hallway leading there is better. But because everyone says the Sistine Chapel mm-hmm. is the most important, that's where everyone wants to go. That's where you got to be. And then, unfortunately, you can't take photos there, so everybody wants to get out of there right away. <laughs> <laughs> right? So we're going to say and, – and the interest is I, why I, – there are people that should go to Rome that would – People, cry people like history or people who the, like art at the beauty of the art and if you're stunned by that it's got tremendous value that wasn't certainly less than half of the people that i encountered mm-hmm. and certainly less than half of my family uh which is fine and i have no negative judgment of that what i'm concerned about is that every person comes home and when asked about the trip it's amazing oh it's amazing yeah it was so oh you to dive the food amazing it's wouldn't it be a it's cool spaghetti? It's it be mac a cool and cheese <laughs> experiment, which you could never run, but it, it, to just say like, okay, for the next year or five years yeah. or whatever, you are not allowed to share any photos you take. You can take photos. I tried. Absolutely, you can yeah. take photos. You want to have photos of your family for when yeah. they're gone, but you can't share any photos and you can't talk about your experience. Yeah. How, how what would you do? people would live. What would I'd you serve, do? And I'd hang out. I have tried to make my life match that more. Me too. Which is why I stopped going to the gym. Because <laughs> <laughs> Grace doesn't care. If I and wasn't I don't post on Instagram. being looked at, I don't care. <laughs> I did lose five and a half pounds in five days. How'd you do that? So you get up at 6 a.m. to make a tour. Oh, and you just and then there's Italian tiny little things that are open, and it's white bread. I had one piece of white bread, and then I got on a bus and wanted to throw up. So I was no more of that. I was going to say, I think most people gain weight in Italy. I was doing 18 hour fast, crush, man. Dude, pasta. I was and doing ice 18 cream, hour gelato. fast without it, and I don't eat ice cream. And then I did have the pasta, which I don't normally eat. And I, tr- I did good. I was a pescatarian while I was there, man. It's not easy. <laughs> did you have any gelato at all? No. It's pretty no. it's pretty delightful. I, well, it was certainly I was there and it's quite yummy. Do I need ice cream from Italy? <laughs> I'm just saying <laughs> I'm sure I would have I probably would have made me sick given how long it's been since I've had that kind of her- heavy dairy. Yeah, yeah. I would have just thrown up. I'd Henry be, got some. Everybody got some. But I know. You know. I really want Henry. There's a gelato place down the street. To try it and compare. And I really want Henry to try it. Sure, he's I, he can't. He's similar. biased. But it'd okay. be cool to do a blind taste he'd test. He'd probably say they were similar. Or maybe one was slightly better. The point is not that Rome isn't cool. Not that Rome doesn't have fun things. That it, for me, and I think for many of the people who were there, it was not worth the time and money invested to get there. Similar to college. When I talk about college, people always go, you didn't get any value? What are you saying? Because I'm, I'm pretty down on college generally. You sure are. And, and my answer is no, I'm not saying that it wasn't fun or that I didn't learn. I'm saying it took four years, and even with a full scholarship, I had a hundred grand of debt afterwards. Yeah, yeah. I'm saying it wasn't worth that. Yeah, there was an opportunity cost. <laughs> yes.